Hey, this is Open Campus. This is Ed 099 College Success. And today we're going to go over monitoring. We're going to look at monitoring test taking. Probably one of the most frightening things we have to face is taking tests. We've already looked at test anxiety, and if you missed that, you might want to go back to Module 9 and take a look at that. But in test taking, we're going to look at how to prepare for test and then some specific strategies for different types of tests. Well, if you've made a schedule uh, from the very start, you know when you have a test approaching. Uh, so we've talked about how to ramp up our study time uh, for taking those tests. But here we are on test day. You're in the classroom or you're sitting in front of your computer ready to take that test. What do you do? Well, my first suggestion is look over the entire test before you do anything. Uh, see what you have ahead of you. Uh, this may not be possible with some computerized tests that are offered only one question at a time. Uh, but in advance, ask the teacher what type of questions will be on the test. This way you can be prepared for specific strategies. Look for the questions with the higher point values. If you know them, go ahead and answer them first. Let's face it, if you've got a 20 point essay question that you can nail that answer to right away, go ahead and answer that question and get it out of the way. That's 20 points in your pocket. Rather than struggling with five or six multiple choice questions that you're not sure of and lose time on. So go for the high value questions first. When you look at the essay questions, uh, you want to maybe start and write a little outline for them. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. Once you've looked for the higher point value questions and answered them, start cruising through the test for the easy questions. Answer them first. These are the ones you pretty much don't even have to think about. You know the answer and you can get right on them. Uh, on the first day of class or once that teacher has announced when a test is approaching, ask your instructor if they have any recommendations about taking their test. Every teacher can be just a little different and they may have recommendations of their own. Students often forget to ask the teacher, thinking the teacher won't tell them. The teacher will be glad to share this information with you. As you have a test approaching, focus more and more of your study time on that test. But as we've seen when making our schedules, you may have multiple tests the same week, so you might be doing many uh, rampings for the same uh, week of testing. I cannot stress to you enough how important it is for you to follow your regular routine of diet, exercise, and sleep. Uh, all too often, students think they have to cram and late nights and lots of caffeine to uh, get themselves prepared for a test. This is absolutely the worst thing you can do. You want to be in the same frame of mind and condition when you learn the material when you take the test. So if you go to class all ramped up on caffeine, by all means, ramp up on caffeine for that test. But if you don't, then don't do that for test days. Try to follow your regular routine as often as possible. I would like to say a special word about math and science. Uh, these can be particularly uh, difficult because they're not so much um, providing information back to the teacher as they are demonstrating your ability to do certain types of problem solving. So for math and science, do the daily practice homework that you have been assigned by your teacher. Uh, even if you have to say, well, you know, I've already done that, do it again. High achieving students always uh, work the problems over and over again. As you see a test in science or math drawing closer, increase your practice. If you encounter any type of problem at all, do not delay in seeking a tutor to help you with those types of issues. Now, in college we have all sorts of different uh, types of tests. You've probably been exposed to some of these in high school, but
but they're a little more uh, challenging once we get at the college level. First of all, essay questions. You may face an entire test that is nothing but essay questions. So the first thing you need to do is learn how to budget your time. This is where it's very helpful that you've looked through the test first and picked out those questions you know the answers to already. For each essay question, write a brief outline that answers your question, and that is my third recommendation for essay questions. Be sure that you have answered the question. All too frequently, students write down a lot of information and never quite get to the question. Beware of the essay question that has multiple parts. There might be one, two, or three questions in that one essay question. Be sure that you have touched on each one of those. Here's a word of advice that I didn't include on the PowerPoint slide, and I'm not so sure I would share this with other teachers, so shh, it's our little secret. Don't ever leave an essay question blank. Put down something. Even if you have to say, I know that we discussed this in class, and here are things that I remember about it, but I can't quite get to the answer that you're looking for, so I have at least included some information. First of all, the teacher will appreciate the fact that you have been honest uh, and that you did remember something about the question. Um, often tell students you might luck out and it might be the day the teacher is just plowing through those essay questions and they're half asleep and they just give you credit for it anyway. So never leave a blank space on your test. Multiple choice questions. Often students think these can be among the easiest when in fact some multiple choice questions can be real stranglers. Uh, so watch for clue words like always, never, and only. Uh, that's almost a dead giveaway uh, to the question. Look for words like not, except, or but. That's sort of a red flag. I often tell students if the options are all of the above or none of the above, pay extra special attention there. Chances are that was an important question and the faculty member wanted you to be sure to know all components related to that question. In multiple choice, skip questions you don't know, particularly if you're uh, strapped for time, but be sure and go back and answer them. Don't lose points on a test because you left it blank. You have absolutely no chance of getting credit if the question wasn't answered. Matching questions. Before you answer any questions in a matching problem, read through all of the responses and choices. This way, you can have clear in your mind what is available. Do those you know first, and that may eliminate any guessing that you have to do later on. Bottom line, if you have to guess, you probably didn't prepare well enough for that test. True and false questions. Again, look for clues similar to those in multiple choice. Look for absolute words like always, never, except, but. These are sort of red flag clues. Uh, be careful of dub double negative uh, statements in true and false questions, uh, and be clear when you're answering. A common problem students have in true and false is their T's and F's look very similar. You might ask the teacher if they want you to write out the word so there can be no ambiguity about your response. Again, some special comments about math and science, particularly when you're using a calculator. Double check all of your answers. Uh, you need to include this in your budget of time for your math and science uh, classes. Uh, for those tests, in your budget, be sure you can double check your answers. Double check all work that you've done on the calculator. Many times students miss a question because they hit the wrong key on the calculator. Also, often in math classes and occasionally in classes like chemistry and physics, the teacher wants to see your work, so not only will you have a written test paper, you might have been given scratch paper, be sure that you turn that in as well. Uh, don't lose points 
because you have not provided all the information that the teacher is looking for. Now I want to spend just a few moments talking about delivery systems. When I went to college, all of your tests took place in the classroom sitting at a desk. That may not be the case any longer. Uh, so uh, for an on paper test delivered in the classroom, it's always easy to review the entire test. I often recommend to my students that they consider taking the test backwards. Start on the last page and move towards the front. This means that the majority of your time may be spent on essay questions, which teachers commonly put at the end of a test. But what it also means is you may have answers uh, already given on the test that you need towards the front part of the test. This is just a little hint I learned many years ago and it has served me rather well. One type of test that we use in a college classroom is a machine scored test. These are often called scantrons. Uh, you bubble in the answer. If you've taken any standardized test, these are often called machine scored tests. Uh, find out, first of all, exactly what the teacher wants on it. Does your name, uh, all, all that's required, will they want the teacher's name, the class, or the section? Many times you take tests in a testing center uh, away from your teacher, so you need to know precisely what information the teacher wants on that uh, machine scored uh, form. These are run through a small computer that looks at all the dots and produces the grade at the end of that document. The trouble is, if you have placed any additional marks on that score sheet, it may read those as your answer. So you have to be sure if you're marking a question to go back at and look at, erase any extra marks that you have provided on that document. Now, very commonly, tests are delivered by computer today. Even if you're taking the test in the classroom, uh, it may be that the test is administered on a computer. Here's a couple of questions you're going to want to ask that instructor. Will you be able to see the entire test one time, or is it delivered only one question without the ability to go back? That's seriously going to affect how you plan and budget your time for that test, because if you have 50 minutes for 50 questions, you realize you can only spend one minute per question, and there's no opportunity to go backwards. You also need to ask if there is a method to see what you have or haven't answered. For example, if all of your test is offered to you at one time, scrolling up and down on the screen can actually make you quite dizzy, and it's easy to miss a question that you haven't answered. I really like our test delivery system here at Bipsy because it gives you an answer bar that when you click on it shows you the questions that you have not yet responded to. That's a tool that I tell all of my students to take advantage of. Lastly, let's talk just a moment about open book and open note tests. Often students think these are the simplest types of tests. Let me tell you, you could not be more inaccurate. Open book tests are among the hardest tests you'll ever receive. Uh, there are ways to prepare for them, uh, put flags or post-it notes on your uh, different pages of your book, highlighting material that you know you will need to access. I would study twice as hard for an open book or open note test as I would a test that's being a uh, closed book without use of my notes. Often, faculty members will tell students they can bring a note card with information on it, and students try to put all of their notes onto one note card. Be careful. What you really want are key pieces of information, things that you're likely to forget, or things that will spark your remembering other items. So beware of the open notebook or open book test. These can be among some of the most difficult. Well, I hope some of these strategies will help you uh, with your test taking. Above all else, remember to ask your instructor uh, what's coming up on the test, what type of questions they will be, even go so far as to ask how many multiple choice, how many true and false, 
how many essay questions so that you can accurately study for each of those. Never leave a question blank and lose points simply because you're not sure of an answer. Best of luck taking those tests. This is the way to college success. Thank you.